How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday. It's just before noon here along the West Coast. 9-11-2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity here on the globe shows a 4.7 earthquake. Uh, looks like it's hiding. Uh, where is it hiding? Let's check it out real quick here. Looks like into, well, there's a 1.6 up into Alaska. Also a 4.7 there across the Curl Camp Chatka Trench. Uh, got a pretty good cluster of aftershocks occurring. This is where the 8.8 uh, .8 earthquake struck there at the end of July this year. That uh, is a decent amount of uptick here between yesterday and today with a number of fours. Uh, multiple fives in there as well from yesterday. Um, I still think uh, we're at a limbo here in terms of seeing some larger adjustment, whether it's back here across Japan or potentially the Cascadia and the west coast here of the state. So I'm watching this closely. Uh, Oregon and Washington got some earthquake activity up in Washington around the Mount St. Helens area. Uh, let's go double check that and see what we got here for today's activity. It's been a, a bunch of earthquake activity up here recently across Mount St. Helens and Mount Rainier. Uh, let's see what we got here today though real quick. If they're adding earthquakes on the map there then obviously we got some earthquake activity. Uh, that's stirring up. There's one from late, late last night. There may be a couple of other smaller ones in there as well. Uh, it does look like the amplitudes have been uh, squashed a little bit. Let's see what the reporting here. So, yeah, about uh, right around 8 o'clock or so, there was a little point one, very small earthquake. But this is after 8 o'clock, so... Yeah, that's, they've been occasionally uh, mentioning that some of these very small ones are like a magnitude 0.2 or magnitude 0.1. Not a 1 or 2, but, uh, you know, a fraction of that uh, magnitude. So I'm sure there's some earthquake activity occurring, not really being reported all that much up here. Uh, we'll quick give a quick glance here at Mount Rainier and see what's up there today as well. Just give a quick glance. Uh, maybe some earthquake activity here in the, the bigger lines those are very small earthquakes looks like a lot of noise out there as well maybe some ice quakes and whatnot but uh, nothing big stirring up out there across the volcanoes for now cascadia subduction zone holding on quietly um at least here in the last 24 hours or so of course we had that big swarm out there along the gorda ridges with a uh, tremor activity kicking up here let me show you guys the tremor map from yesterday 162 epicenters of tremor that's a slow slip events there across the subduction zone of the Cascadia, mainly down there across the southern end where I feel like we're going to see something uh, happen there soon. A um, couple earthquakes this morning down there across northern California, the latest of 1.7. That's 13 miles deep here uh, into the area, uh, but above the slow slip events, um, slow slip events there occurring about 20 miles deep or, or so underneath this area. And of course, as I showed you guys, trimmer activity has been elevated down there across the southern end of the Cascadia. Uh, we'll check that later tonight, though, and see what we got for the uh, latest slow slip event count. Uh, the Bay Area lighting up out here as well. Got uh, a number of earthquakes this morning. Uh, 1.5, 1.2, and a two-pointer, all within about an hour of each other here. Uh, the latest does show uh, an earthquake outside of Vallejo. That is off of the... Uh, it uh, looks like it's close to the Green Valley fault zone, but uh, definitely get some earthquake activity out here in the last week with some elevated movement along the Hayward Fault as well. Of course, that's coming up for a big earthquake near term uh, just because of the amount of time that has passed out there since the last big one. Uh, a little earthquake up there south of Mount or uh, Lake Tahoe, a little 1.3. Uh, let's see what we got here for Southern California. See if there's anything above 2.5. Close that out. Uh, let's see, what am I doing here? 2.5. Where are we? Oh, up here. <laughs> Feels like a Monday. Um, one earthquake today after the midnight time frame from yesterday, a little 2.6. Well, this is just after 1 o'clock or so in the morning down along the Imperial Fault south of the Baja California border. So aside from that, uh, generally small microquake activity out here. Nothing big stirring up across the West Coast for now. It does look like uh, 
most of the pressurizations out here across this region. But it's been, like I say, it's been bouncing back and forth here between California, the West Coast, and over here across the western area of the Pacific Plate. Up in the Yellowstone, um, there's a 2.1 showing up in Yellowstone National Park this morning. Uh, 3.7 miles deep. So let's go see that earthquake. I'm sure that showed up quite nicely on the seismograph stations here. Stand by for a second. Looks like it's up here around this region. Uh, this seismograph station right here is showing it. That's going to be that 2.1. Some other noise out there as well. I don't see any major swarms going on. Just a, an occasional earthquake or two across the area of Yellowstone. Uh, the rest of the country, here's that earthquake interesting earthquake there from uh, yesterday deep 4.1 underneath utah that's a little odd uh, to see that deep of an earthquake underneath this region 42 miles deep goodness all right um i have to see if anything else becomes of that oil fields of texas oklahoma still rocking and rolling out across the new madrid seismic zone nothing big going on there some earthquake activity from yesterday uh, and again, a glance at the world view. A lot of activity up north around the Crow Cam Chatka. Um, let's see if there's anything else going on here. The Atlantic, pretty quiet. Some movement up around Iceland. Mediterranean region. Got some older quakes here on the globe from yesterday. Um, a bunch of clustering here across this area of the Philippines, southward into the Indonesia area. This is very common, though, uh, to see this clusterization going on. Nothing big going on there for now. Newer activity across the Vanuatu region, 4.8, and some activity stirring up down here across New Zealand, a couple threes uh, on the map today. But I still think primarily we need to watch areas here across roughly the northern portion here of the Pacific Plate. Um, these areas have been quite active here recently, and many regions are uh, well primed for some big earthquake activity. Uh, let's go check out Hawaii real quick, see if anything else is stirring up out there in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Of course, it, the hot spot, right? Things are going to change here as the Pacific Plate uh, moves around a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Deformation data. A little slow there on the USGS side today. Uh, we're still going up. This is the inflation model across Kilauea Volcano. Here's our last eruption. Notice the deflationary event. That's because the the volume of magma being uh, um, withdraw from the area below. We're still uh, going up, though, a little bit slower this time. Uh, so we'll watch that. I don't think we're anywhere close to any uh, type of eruption right now, number of days before that happens. Uh, there is a massive coronal hole that's facing us here. You can see it. Even on the UV filter, image of the sun, not a whole lot of sunspots. There's one area back over here, looks a little bright. But uh, that is a dandy of a coronal hole that is directly facing us. Now, magnetic, ma magnetic lines here kind of shoot off from this area. That's why it shoots out high-speed solar wind stream. Um, the sunspots over here kind of loop back in, and in on themselves. Uh, here's a little example. This is from the uh, <coughs> Berkeley education site here i'm just going to blow this up just a little bit and show you guys uh here's a, a uh, coronal hole notice how the magnetic lines are just shooting out in a straight line um, a lot of people here and a lot of folks tend to think that that elevates earthquake activity and causes big events here on the planet well this is going to be a good test because we have a directly facing coronal hole and it's about as massive as you can get I say if nothing becomes of this, say if we have quiet conditions there with the, the only only typical normal daily activity in various areas. Uh, with this thing facing us, well, you know, one could assume that maybe that doesn't, uh, there's no relationship between that, between causing or elevating big earthquake activity here on the planet. Uh, just a little, little topic, you know, a little thoughts there that space weather, do, I do believe space weather has an effect here on the planet. Um, I've mainly found out, though, that it's due to protons impacting the planet. Now, here, this is just high-speed solar wind stream, along with the magnetic lines shooting out from the sun out into space. But this is directly facing us. So, here in the next couple days, you know, if this 
is what causes elevated earthquake activity, then we should be seeing big earthquake activity here soon. Just uh, We'll see what happens, though. It's just a thought. It's not 100% solid, right? We've gone back and forth on this throughout the years, looking at uh, the relationship when things are happening here on the planet and when things are happening on the sun. And there's not definite scientific proof there that uh, they are related. But kind of keeping a little book here on the side of when things are uh, could be related to each other there in terms of the uh, Earth-Sun relationship. Uh, let's see here real quick what we got. Yeah, so that image of the uh, sunspot there, let's see, we just barely got a little glimpse of it. Here's the latest imagery over here on the eastern limb, far eastern limb. There's a sunspot region over there from what I can tell right here. It doesn't look all that complex, but uh, we'll get a better view of that here in the coming days. But keep an eye there on the coronal hole. We'll see what happens. Either way, that is blasting off some high-speed solar wind stream, and that will arrive on the planet here in a couple days. Uh, nothing there in the forecast, though, for now in terms of the aurora activity. That could stir up the auroras so once the arrival of the high-speed solar wind stream reaches the planet. Uh, looks like we did have a little sea flare activity last night, early this morning. But nothing big going on there on the sun, aside from that coronal hole. Uh, as far as any close approach asteroids go here to the planet, <coughs> excuse me, got this one coming in today. That is a massive one, almost a 500-foot rock, building size asteroid out there. Uh, that's over a million and a half miles from the planet. We definitely want to keep that thing away. If that were to hit the planet... Um, you know, not only would that create a, a huge fireball, but it would probably impact the ground as well. That's 500, 500 feet. That would definitely make a neat little impact crater. But uh, we, we definitely don't want that to happen. Keep that uh, away from the area. Millions of miles away for the, uh, the remainder of those. Uh, as far as any severe weather goes across the uh, surface here, Slight risk up into Montana and uh, portions of North Dakota up there. Looks like mainly due to a little bit of wind and some hail threats out there. Nothing in terms of tornado potential today. A uh, quick glance at uh, the numerical models, checking to see if there's any hurricane potential out here. Uh, watch down here in the Gulf and also out across the Atlantic. We'll put this into motion. And there's some, well, Something that looks like it's starting to spin down here into the Gulf off the coast there of Mexico. Uh, we'll have to watch that. That's a ways out, though. That's almost towards the end of September. And these models here are just some type of guidance, a little guidance in terms of what could be taking place because of weather trends and, and pressure differences out here. That's how the computer model picks up on what could be taking place down the road. But we'll check back on that one. That uh, more than likely is not going to ring true. But uh, we'll check back on it as we get closer. That's towards the end of uh, September. All right. Uh, I think that's about it, folks. There's, uh, like I say, it's kind of a, definitely an uptick in terms of earthquake activity across Russia area. Uh, of course, aftershock sequences here. Some movement around the Nankai Trough, some smaller activity. We do got to watch that as well. But I still think we're going to see some activity on ter in terms of larger movement across one of these sides here of the northern area of the Pacific Plate. So we'll continue to watch things and report back on anything that uh, happens out here. Have yourself a wonderful Thursday. Uh, not too bad out here in Northern California today. It's supposed to be up around 82 or so. Last couple of days have been perfect, but uh, we got a slow and gradual warming trend back up to the hundreds here um, in a couple of days. So I enjoyed the coolness while it was here. Have a good one. We'll see you guys out here a little bit later on this evening.